to rank like so you know content marketing you know doing podcasts you know seo um and then now you're doing some ads would you say there's one channel that you say you, you know you're getting the highest kind of roi and would suggest to our audience to, to focus on if they were to focus on one i think content i think seo okay. uh i mean you see it's hard right so for us um we have a, like there's keywords that are out there that people are searching for mm. so like that makes sense for us <clears throat> um but that might not make sense. Advertising might be easier for somebody else. So it just depends on, on how you obtain your customers. We, mm -hmm. we, we don't talk to anybody. We, all of our stuff is done online. So uh, they go onto our website, they sign up for our service, they pay us through credit card and that's that. Um, so I, but to answer the question, I do find value in if you have a secret sauce in how you grew the business, then I think you should, you should tell other people about it, but don't lie because a lot of people are like, I see ads all the time. These crappy ads. It's like, <laughs> I drive a Lamborghini and, and this is how I did it. And yeah. it's like, bro, you never, you don't own that car. <laughs> and it, I don't know about you, but like, I hate seeing people who promote themselves by their, by what they, by, by yeah. what they wear mm -hmm. or by what they have. Um, I think entrepreneurship sucks, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I would never wish, I don't regret anything, right? But entrepreneurship sucks. It's hard. It is, it is depressing. Um, mm -hmm. It is scary. And to promote that by bragging about what you have, uh, I think it's just, that's not the way to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not the reality of it, right? I mean, that's what people love. They love the, the end goal, but they don't love the process. And that's exactly. because the process is work. And I'm in love, love with the process. Love I it. love the process. Like that's, that's my, that's what gets me up every day. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the same. I'm the same. I mean, the result is like a little bit of a, a dopamine hit, but at the end of the day, it's like, I, I just want to keep doing it. And I think that's yeah, what keeps exactly. It yeah. Yeah. And what, what do you guys add in terms of uh, users right now or, or month, like average or so? Uh, I'm not able to share that just because of competitive nature, but mm. um, we were able to grow our business within the first three months. So this is being recorded in March. Um, we've already obtained two milestones that we thought that we were going to get in June of 2021. Uh, and we achieved that in, uh, in March. Um, and then we're on already on our way to the second milestone that we thought that we were going to end in November. Um, we are on a crazy hiring spree right now, which is something that we're incredibly grateful for. And I hope that we're able to hire um, at the rate in which we're able to keep up with demand. So that's always going to be an issue. So, um, but that's, that's the best answer that I can give you to give you an inclination of how well we're doing. Oh, that's cool. Um, Question, I guess, on, on management. So I think that's something now, you know, SaaS founders are facing remote teams, team based in, uh, you know, project managers in the U.S. And then you have teams in, you know, so called Philippines. Uh, do you have project managers in the Philippines or, you know, office managers or managing it? Or are you able to effectively, you know, manage all that remotely? We are able to manage that remotely. Uh, and we do have managers that are over, uh, that, are, that are in that country as well. Um, so the, the thing that I would speak to about that is communication is incredibly important going back to the idea of like using loom. Um, sometimes people, uh, do not learn the way that you learn. And so you need to be able to cover all of your bases, uh, going back to processes and procedures. What we usually do when we communicate a new idea is we write a memo that's, a, you know, uh, in, in the form of a Google doc. Uh, and we attach a video uh, associated with that to ensure that there's like zero confusion. Because mm -hmm. when you work with people, especially managers, um, your first reaction is like, what the F, man? Like, why, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing your job? And it's not that they're not doing their job. It's just they might be confused with what, what you said versus what the reality is and how they interpreted it. So um, to me, that's like, critical super critical to communicate as much as possible 
Um, and just on that point where you're saying, okay, you've got the Ferrari now, you know, you've got something that's growing really nicely, you know, you're not showing that off, but you know, the process we're talking about is seeing what you had to go through to get to where you guys are today. And I think equally to talk about is, you know, what doesn't work in part of that process and what the struggle is. Um, can you share any of like failed experiments that you maybe run and on the marketing side and say have, have failed and, and you wouldn't do again? There was, uh, we were so happy uh, and excited about this. I, we went to an event and we created uh, what's called the Penji bot, which inevitably is now a part of something inside of Penji. Um, and where we created this giant robot that was about 15 feet tall and we like painted it and we put fur on it and it actually was a vending machine where um, you hit this button and then you uh, and then people were behind it basically like changing the 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 scripts like you know please wait mm -hmm. and then uh, eventually something came out at the bottom of it and it was like this random like gift right so we spent like probably three hundred dollars on on stuff. So we bought like lemons and limes and watermelons, and we bought like these really random ass like things like pool noodles and 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 just like really crazy stuff. And so you would see people walking around this event that had like thousands of people in it, and they had like a like one guy was carrying a watermelon around, and 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 so it created this huge like mix of like things, of. Of like, well, who, where'd you get that from? Like, how to help? Why are you carrying a watermelon? That is stupid. Why would you do that? <laughs> and we probably spent two months in order to do this, to think about it, to execute it, to create it, maybe even longer, to be honest with you. And I think we obtained like two or three sales from it. So you're trying to like, so that hmm. amount of time that we spent on this one giant idea that we thought was going to be this huge money-making machine generated less than or around a thousand dollars worth of revenue. Mm. Would you go at the end of the day, say that that's worth it? I'd probably say no, because imagine what you could do in three months time in order to focus on other areas. And so the one th rule that we came up with is uh, never trade respect for attention in which we, um, uh, in which now it's a cornerstone and philosophy that we have in our company where we're never going to disrespect or we're never going to be cute in order to grab attention. Our decision-making process is more fine-tuned. We have an entire decision-making process flow where if we try to do this new idea, it doesn't matter what idea it is, it could be marketing, it could be a new process, it could be a new feature inside of Penji, does this idea hit all of the measures in our decision-making tree? And mm -hmm. if it doesn't, then we throw it out. doesn't matter how good the idea is. Uh, if a customer comes up, up to us and says, hey, I have this really good idea in order to make the service better, we're going to put that up against our decision-making tree and say, okay, how many customers actually have this problem? Okay, one, throw it out. doesn't matter. Now, what we normally do is we'll, we'll take that, that, that feedback and we'll write it down and we'll say, we'll put it into a category. You know, Johnny said X, Sarah said Y. Um, and then now if we collect that data over time and we see that in the span of a month, 15 people said that, okay, now it's actually a better time to go back to that to that to that thought process so i think as a as a, a a human being it's really easy to be have this shiny object syndrome um but i think we do a really good job at uh just filtering that in order to make really smart decisions that make the, that move the company forward